Hey guys, Todd here from Great Escape Farms. I'm at the Paw Paw Festival in Frederick and I'm walking through Michael Judd's parents' place. He's actually done the landscaping here, or him and his father. And I'm going to walk through a food forest that he has here. So, starting out in the back here is Jerusalem artichoke, but right in front of me on the vines, on the trellises here, is some young hardy kiwi that he has planted. So I don't think these have fruited yet. He does have hardy kiwi elsewhere and it has fruited. Let's pan over here. He has a Rosa Ragusa and Rosa Ragusa has large hips and here's one right here. And the hips are very, very high in vitamin C. You can make teas out of it. You can actually uh, take the fruit off and you can make different things with it. Uh, just make sure you don't eat the seeds because the seeds can are poisonous and can give you some issues there. Let's see, back this way in front of me right here, this is a flying dragon citrus tree. It will have some, uh, it's crossed between an orange and uh, a lemon. And you'll notice some very, very big thorns on it. The, it's, uh, the fruit is a little bit sour, but considering we are in uh, zone seven down to 6B, they're right on the border here. And it actually grows and thrives pretty well here. Uh, that's an amazing plant. So we can actually have citrus up here in this particular zone. You don't have to be in the subtropics. Here's some European elderberry and they don't look as good as my elderberry. My elderberries do. I have Americans. So I think American elderberries do a little better in this area than these do. Uh, again, these are European. I, I don't know for sure, but this right here looks like horseradish to me. So, although it could be burdock, it could be a number of different things. It just kind of has a, a look of horseradish to me. Okay, walking back this way. Let's see, right in front of me here, this is, these are gumi berries. So one is sweet scarlet, and then the other one, I forget the name of it. They, they have two different varieties here. The lady giving the tour said that you need two varieties. However, I have sweet scarlet gumi planted by itself and it does not need a separate or another plant around. It's just by itself and I've been getting plenty of fruit on that. Uh, this is, it actually looks like another gumi plant. Although I thought she said it was autumn olive and I don't see a label on it. Back behind here, this is a cool tree. This is the Chi tree, C-H-E. And it fruits in this area, it apparently thrives in this area. So again, zone six, zone seven area. And the little red fruit there are edible. Uh, just a, a wonderful little tree there. Here is another of the flying dragon trees. Look at the thorn on this thing. I mean, that's, that's two fingers for me. For that thorn right there you could probably make nails out of these things and look at these up here that's three fingers that's that's a huge thorn and they're sharp too it's it's not dull on the end okay let's cruise on down this way uh these are some kind of asian plants here i forget exactly what they called it but they said that they use it for good ground cover you can make food out of it uh and I forget, she said that they haven't done anything with it yet Back here, this is the first of the pawpaw trees. And if you look in here, they have quite a few. They have a line of pawpaw trees growing in here. And these were planted five years ago. So I am six. So I would guess they're at least 10 up to 12 feet tall. And after just five years, they're already producing. You can see a couple fruits here. Just put it in my hand so you can see about how big that fruit is. Oh, there's a huge one back here. Look at how big that is. Just huge. And they have a kind of an apple custard flavor. Again, this is a pawpaw festival and this is a native fruit in the zone six, zone seven area. So uh, these are six year. And he has a couple of others in here growing. Let's walk on around here. This looks like a Nanking cherry or a Korean, but some kind of a bush cherry. Although I'm not sure what type and it's not labeled. Back here he has bamboo. 
and they planted the bamboo as kind of a, a, a barrier to the neighbors here so that they didn't have to stare at their neighbors while they were going along and they say that it, the shoots are edible and as long as you keep it trimmed every single year and don't let them get out of hand you can control them so uh, definitely something you want to do with the bamboo I've heard lots of horror stories that you put them in and they actually get away with themselves and here they have a mint patch and I don't see it here they had in another area where they had lots of comfrey as well and then here they have some figs figs don't look like they've done that great I had some issues with my figs this year too just because we got, had a very very late cold snap coming in and a couple other fruit trees down here not sure exactly what they are but uh, lots and lots of different types of fruit and food and herbs and vegetables in this food forest here and as you can see it looks pretty good it just looks like a, a little oasis that you can kind of tuck into and get away from and absolutely gorgeous so a food forest does not actually have to be a forest itself it can be a nice little area just to get away and offer you lots and lots of food so that's it from Frederick Maryland at the pawpaw festival in September of 2016 this is Todd with Great Escape Farms. Please consider subscribing to our email list at greatescapefarms.com and also subscribing to our YouTube channel. You can just click on the subscribe button right up in the right-hand corner of your YouTube video. Thank you very much and have a great day.